Peter Fiducia's Woods and Water Big Game Adventures is brought to you by Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association, Arctic Cat, Swarovski Optic, Hipstick, Olympia, Chestnut Hill Outdoors, Winchester Ammunition, Wrangler Pro Gear, and True Life Taxidermy. Wow. Hello everyone and welcome to Woods and Water. Please join me this week as I head to Canada to hunt with Craig Pelly, who owns and operates A1 Hunts Twin Lake Outfitters. On this program, I'm going to be hunting for trophy class bulls. Over the years, Kate and I have taken some really good bulls while hunting in Newfoundland. But Craig has told me that in his area, many of the adult bulls have never even seen a human being. So I'm going to set the, the bar high on this hunt and the bull that I'm going to target has to have no less than 20 points and an inside spread of 50 or more inches. And before I know it, I'll be flying high before I even get there. So this is the area, your area, within Area 15? Correct. And about how many square miles? Well, we're hunting about 150 square miles. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Folks, I'm with Craig Pelly. We're taking a break from our hunt. And Craig is the owner and operator of A1 Hunts Twin Lake Outfitting. And uh, the area we're going to be hunting, as you just heard, is uh, over 150 square miles. That's correct. That's an amazing amount of land, and I don't think you could ever see it in a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a lot of animals in this area that I'm sure never see a human being. Uh, I can understand that. This, the, in Newfoundland, that's uh, a, an amazing thing, that many of these moose live in such remote backcountry areas like they have here at Twin Lake Outfitting. Um, never do get to see a, a human being. One of the moose we killed last week, which was a 19-pointer, now it was about 500 yards away. He came directly for us. I'm here to, to hunt for a larger bull. Uh, normally, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hunting for a bull. This, this trip, because of the situation Craig has here with remote areas, I'm looking for a larger bull than I have hanging on the wall. So I'm hoping for, uh, my, my biggest bull is 18 points, I'm hoping for 19 or 20. Yeah. Let's see where we go with that. But um, w one of the things I discovered with the bull, one of the young bulls that we taped, yes. he just stood there. Uh, he had no idea, I mean, he no. was curious as to what we were. Yeah, yeah. He remained there and looked, well, he must have been there 15 minutes. Yeah. So I, I get the picture with that. That's, that's uh, typical of the bulls in here, huh? Yes, that's typical. Tell us a little bit about your last week hunt how many you had 100 percent success correct we've had a hundred percent success throughout the season the whole season the whole season as a matter of fact probably a little better than that because we killed two extra bulls there were so two hunters that had two licenses each and we killed all all the bulls so let me explain about two licenses each in newfoundland if the outfitter has an assigned number of, of moose licenses and let's call it 50 or 30 whatever the number is and he hasn't sold all of those licenses, and he has some still available. If you shoot a bull, or even before you go out, you want to say, I want to have an extra license, you can buy that. It's unique in Newfoundland that you can do that. A hunter can have two licenses, three licenses. Like we do three or four TV shows here a year. I get a license in each place. It's all up to how many tags the, the outfitter has left over. Correct. If he doesn't have any, then you're out of luck, you can only hunt one. But you offer some uh, wilderness camps as well? Yes, we do. Uh, and at the wilderness camps, and when, I, when he says a wilderness camp, I'll give you an idea, we went to see one the other day, and so we got in the Argo, we traveled across a bog that was five miles long, then we got on a, uh, a reclaimed old logging road from the 1950s that you cleared out by hand, mm -hmm and we drove down that road for a good half hour. The, the, it took an hour to cross the bog and another half hour on that logging, old logging road, and we got to the most beautiful wilderness camp I have ever seen. You did a magnificent job with well, that. Well, thank you. Uh, I have to give credit to some of my workers. They, 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 put a, they went a long ways to get that ready for us. Just getting to this main camp, which is absolutely gorgeous, 
I, I mean, it's, it's got every amenity you can imagine, and then some. The rooms are really ro spacious and roomy. Well, spacious and roomy, that's, that's a little repetitive, but they're, <laughs> <laughs> they're spacious. Um, the bathroom is excellent, and nothing is crowded here. And uh, the remote camps, uh, like I said, are, are way back there, but even getting to this lodge, you're way back off the beaten path. Yeah, we sure are, yeah. You, they call it a drive-in. They should call it a fly-in drive-in, because I've been in fly-ins that were further back, well, less further than this is. <laughs> so, all right, so we, we had some really good success all season long. You had a couple of big bulls killed. Uh, I know you had, uh, the camp was full uh, from the opening week until just about now when we're here. And uh, everything I've seen so far has really impressed me. Uh, one you. of the things I was really impressed with is your reefer, your refrigerator. Right now, uh, Craig has a, a meat house, I guess you would call yes. it, a meat, a meat shed, a meat house, that's totally screened in, has an air conditioner in it to keep the, the, the meat cool. And he also has a reefer that he just purchased and he's going to be putting that in this spring, this summer. Yes. yes. And that way, that, that's something that I truly recommend everybody ask when they go to an outfitter, do you have a reefer or, or a really cool down refrigerator uh, to put your meat? So now you're capable of taking care of that meat, keeping it in the reefer uh, a few days and then getting it to a butcher. Yes. And that's a very important factor and it's impressive that you do that because I know some outfitters who take an extra day or so to get it there. And when you can get the meat to the, into the butcher in a day or two, you're in great shape with your meat to go home. Craig's in business a long time. You've been guiding how long? 17, 18 years, somewhere in that. And so he knows what hunters need, he knows what uh, should and shouldn't be done, and if you saw his equipment, you would know that this guy knows what he's doing because everything is in tip-top shape, from the Argos to the ATVs to the boat. Well, we, we try to keep everything well maintained, yes, of course. The types of hunting you do here, calling? We spot and stock and, and call. We do a lot of calling because uh, we find, you know, the season opens generally around the middle of September. and. Um, the bulls are already then in pre-rut, so they responding. Will, they're responding to the call by then. The weather is a is a is a, an uncontrollable factor. Um, yeah, w with warm weather, that slows things down quite a bit. Can't tell Mother Nature what to do. No, <laughs> that's we can't. For sure. We sure can't. What he offers here, folks, is uh, spot and stalk bear hunting. Yes. Some of the largest bears in North America come from Newfoundland, and so that's an important thing. Uh, and in moose hunting. Your caribou season is closed. Yes. We've seen some caribou. We've seen a couple of small herds. This is all one-on-one -on -one guiding. Yes, it is. That's, you know, wow. Uh, you don't find that in 85% of the, the outfitters in Newfoundland don't offer one-on-one. -on -one. And the ones who do, there's a premium to that. And I know your price is very fair and uh, competitively priced, but still a bargain. And that is impressive especially for a one-on-one -on -one hunt. Yes. Well, we, we find, I mean, you know, like, again, I've been guiding for quite some time, and I find w for, for great success, you have to have great guiding. And, and uh, if I have to split myself between two hunters, um, you know, of course, the success goes down. Yeah. It has to. Um, you know, you, you, for example, you're, you're hunting with your friend. Now, you, you take down a moose Monday morning. Well, then I'm pretty much tied up for the rest of the day to get that moose out and things like that. So it, it affects your... It affects the other person's yes, hunt. So one-on-one, -on -one, it's your moose, you're enjoying the time that it's taking to get it back, you know? Yes. Yeah, that's that's very true. You don't want to be standing there watching your friend's moose get butchered and brought in and yeah. everything. There goes my hunting time. Yes, you know? yes, yes. So that's a, that's a, a, a positive factor here at Twin Lake Outfitters. Um, I know you'll be at some sports shows in the East this year where people can find you. Um, website yes. uh, is A1 Hunts? It's simply A1Hunts.com. And it'll give you a lot of information. It's a nice site. Uh, and if, they, if you want to, uh, give Craig a call. He's he, really accessible. I mean, I've called you a few times. And um, at the lodge here, they have uh, Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. And so uh, that's another plus point, because if you want to get in touch with home or you want to check your business emails, which I advise you shouldn't <laughs> while you're here, you can do that. Um, again, the lodging is, is such that 
Um, you even have privacy doing that. It's, it's really a, a very nice area. This lodge, you did a terrific job with the decorations too. My compliments go to Deb. And yes. she really did a great job. Yeah, so, I can't take credit for that, no. <laughs> no, see, he's, in my house, I do the decorating. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm in touch with my feminine side. I see, I see. <laughs> so if you're interested in getting in touch with him, give him a call. I know you'll have uh, more questions than I tried to cover here in this interview. And um, Craig has spent as much time with you as you want. If you're at any of the shows in the East, you can check where Craig is going to be on my website. And I'm sure he's going to put it on his website and you can talk to them there as well. Um, and they're easygoing folks. Uh, he's kind of a laid back guy and, and eager to please and happy to answer any questions you have. I wanna thank you so far for everything that uh, you've done here. We're having a very enjoyable time. The hunting's been a little tougher than we expected with weather. Um, we got knocked in the nose again with another bad week of half no, I mean, moonshine and, yes. and warm temperatures in the morning. But, you know, we have been seeing moose. Um, I saw one bull that I let go. Um, if it follows true to form, I'm going to regret that. <laughs> yeah, but that's the way she is. I'm, I, I chose to, to try to take a bigger bull here, and that's what I'm going to try to do. If I go home without it, I'm happy, and I had a good time, and that's all that counts. It's not always about the antlers, but this particular hunt, it is for me. Uh, I want to get a big bull that's bigger than what I have at home. So hopefully that'll happen. Thanks so much for having me. You're I really welcome. appreciate the hospitality. You're and very uh, we'll, we'll definitely uh, show you my big bull if we get lucky with the weather. <laughs> okay. The plan is today, we're, we're, I'm looking at both. There's a smaller bog over in this corner over here. We haven't hunted that this year. And okay. there, there's, I mean, there's big bulls over in that area. But we're also looking at down as far as we can go down the bog here probably about five miles and there's a small bog off to the left i can see that in the, in the hills high there yeah no but you can't see the one that i'm speaking of because it's oh, okay. down or under down in the valley a little bit okay there. there's a tremendous amount of moose sign down there for the last two weeks and we found rat holes and you can smell them down in there so we're looking at maybe setting up down in there this evening because we're getting in the later part of the rut here now right and so it's easier to dig them out in small closer areas than it is into the wide open wide open box. space okay all right so that's, so that's it that's the plan uh hopefully i mean i've never seen a bigger bog than this and hopefully uh where uh craig is talking about we'll be able to pull one out in a tight little spot but this looks really moosey it's moosey all right Winds up, clouds, thank God, because the sun is what's been killing us, and the moon. Uh, it's been going on since my last hunt, which is a week ago, at another outfitter, and now here. I mean, the temperatures are incredible for the middle of October. I mean, you look like you're all dressed for winter, but it's not. I'm sweating. <laughs> you're sweating. So, Dion, uh, this is one of his favorite bogs. It's a small little bog. We've been hunting it for three times now, right? Three, yeah, three, three evenings. And uh, twice we didn't see anything. We sat here for hours. Uh, we really need a break in the weather. Mm. And we need a break with the moon, which is now waning, but it's still bright as heck, you know? So tonight, are we coming back? We're coming back here tonight, yeah. You know, so, something to be said for tenacity. <laughs> for not giving up, right? You see a uh, sign, stick to the area, I find. But you know what I noticed? We got away from aggressive calling, and Dion really backed off that today, and we saw that young bull, yeah. um, and we saw a cow. Uh, we're still waiting for the big bull. So right now we're gonna go back to the wilderness camp, get something to eat. Uh, Have a little break. Get what? Have a little break. Have a little break. That means the stove is going on <laughs> and a nap might be in order. 
and then get back here early enough to watch this bog. If uh, this wind drops it too, that'll be a big help for us. Uh, this wind. If what? I'm if sorry. This, if this wind drops in, yeah. it will be a good help for us well, too. Move, yeah. Move it again. Yeah. I find they tuck, tuck her down in the... Uh, yeah, when it wind. gets this windy, they do. They, they get right down, get into this gnarly stuff yeah. to get away from the wind. The one thing a, wind, um, a moose doesn't like is heavy wind. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Don't ask me why, although on occasion, um, like my wife, she took one in a 65, degree, 65 mile per hour wind a couple of years ago, walking across a huge open bog. But what we think happened was another bigger bull kicked him out mm -hmm. and he was crossing the bog to get away. Yeah. Because it was 65 mile an hour gusts. Well, that's it, that's the update. Nothing really to tell other than uh, we're having a great time. Um, the lodge is beautiful, the food is good. <laughs> Everything is comfortable. But we're without a moose, so we're gonna work hard on it for the next two and a half days. All right, I guess we gotta get out of here, huh? Yep. All right, there you go, that's the update. Well, folks, as it turned out, I didn't get the opportunity to take the trophy class bull I had set my sights on. But I assure you, it wasn't because of a lack of trying by Craig and his guides or that we didn't see any bulls. In fact, I passed on shooting a bull I would have taken anywhere else. But that's all part of a trophy hunt. Sometimes you score, and sometimes you go home without your game. Give Craig a call and talk to him about booking your hunt. You'll be glad you did.